systematic way, how would you prevent rather than curate uh, errors? Welcome to Architecture Corner. And today we will talk about what happens to society when there is a huge IT failure. And today's guest is Joachim Limbom. Welcome Joachim. Thank you. You have been working with several clients where the systems are society critical. Yeah, What's that, your experience? That's true. I've been working actually in three different scenarios where the, uh, not talking about a business critical but rather a society critical uh, system. Uh, given the situation that when the system fails there will be either a significant impact to society or in some cases actually the loss of lives. So uh, when as an architect where you're working with things that are not only time and money but actually people's lives and the effect on society, you need to think quite differently. Yesterday there was a huge disruption in the Swedish uh, air traffic due to something. We don't know about it yet. These things could happen in other places. They can happen in other places and they do happen in other places and I think that uh, for what I know right now with the Arlanda incident yesterday uh, it seems to be a simple thing like a network car that, that failed and uh, I've actually been doing the same kind of experience myself where, where in, in systems uh, which were designed to be very high level uh, availability and very fault tolerant with duplication or whatsoever in all layers uh, still we actually noticed some uh, or one single time a failure so Again, uh, you need to think in a way that not only duplication, not only redundancy, but actually you need to think in a much more systematic way how would you prevent rather than curate uh, errors. Is this something you think of today when you design the systems? It surely is, and uh, I would say, depending of course of the criticality, but you, you shouldn't apply this kind of highly critical um, criteria to systems that are not highly critical, but uh, I would say that there are some learning points and you could go into extremes when you're talking about nu nuclear plants, when talking about uh, space missions and so on. Mm. It is a way of actually preventing the errors from happening. You have to have a full systematic approach, not looking at the IT system or the software system as a component, but rather the full system, and that includes the entire life cycle and all people in that system. What, what is the root cause behind this, that it is like this? There are many root causes and I think that uh, looking from, from an architecture point of view, one thing like we talked about before would be imagination, that you, are not, uh, you, you don't have the imagination to think up of the scenario. Uh, I mean, I've done myself, uh, as mentioned a couple of times, doing uh, system, designing systems that were fully redundant on all levels. And of course, as part of that, we were doing hardening, we were doing different kinds of, of testing that we actually did lock out and shut down part of the stack and see if the failovers work and so on. Everybody does that, of course, uh, or at least I hope everybody's doing that when they do these kind of systems. But what I did not do, uh, I wasn't in that case uh, having enough imagination to actually to, to break the system in an unpredictable way. I think, and this is where your imagination get, goes, goes in, that you need to come up with ways of actually trying to break the system in whatever way. If you compare to cars, today's modern cars, we have safety belts, we have uh, air pillows. Can yeah. we apply the same thinking to IT? Yes, absolutely. And, and uh, I think that what we need to do is, of course, the things like having independent systems that are doing monitoring. And we have that today in the sense that we are doing monitoring of, of system. Does the system work or not? But we are, do not have this situation where we are provoking the system. We don't have a systematic shutdown of, of system components. In, in most IT systems, you have a running state, which is the defined normal state. But I think we need to go into the state of, like you say, looking at the car industry, where you're doing, not only having uh, car belts, but you're actually doing crash testing. And you do that as a part of development. You're doing hard and, and, and really invasive testing into the systems. The reason for this is not only that you would like to provoke the components, you would like to provoke everything. And that is the people, the processes, the ways of working, the tooling around, and so on. Most of the time, it's not the components themselves that fails. It's something in the environment that fails. That, that, is, that is my uh, experience. That, that is something unknown or unexpected outside of the system that is provoking it in a way you didn't think of. That is normally what is failing. Ah, so it's a fire drill from an IT perspective. It's a fire drill for sure, and a fire drill you need to repeat. I've seen, seen quite many companies that uh, do ha uh, have designed disaster recovery situations or backup situations on, but they do not do the drill. They don't practice. They don't do that. And uh, 
of course that can end up in having a, a backup uh, solution that doesn't work because there is something wrong in the way you're doing backup or there is something wrong in the way you're doing restore. Uh, it could be a technology thing, of course. It could be a configuration thing. It could be people. It could be whatever. But doing the fire drills would expose the, the flaws. And not only the flaws in the design, but actually the flaws in the design going forward because most systems are not stable. Things change in the environment. And doing drills will expose changes that actually are in some way or another applying to the system that actually put up new requirements or change requirements. Perhaps you wouldn't know that, that unless you have a failure or better you have a fire drill that actually brings these changes to the surface. What about the cost perspective? If I buy cheap things they are usually not as reliable. No. The same with IT of course and uh, I think you, you can view this in two ways. I do view this as a total cost. Looking at the IT cost, yes, that goes up, but of course the business cost or the total impact of the cost goes down. So that's one thing that you actually realize that having a cheap IT system might actually not be cheap for the, for the business. So actually allowing for an, 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 an extension in cost in that part. You could also view it as, as an insurance, that uh, you actually buy an insurance where you ensure with this insurance that things are continuing to work. Uh, you would buy an insurance for a car, for sure, but most people don't buy an insurance for their IT systems. I think they should. One way of saving money is consolidation, that you have several uh, business lines or several companies sharing the same infrastructure, but it also has some consequences. Absolutely. I mean, sh shared components, if it's software or if it's hardware or whatever, licenses. But looking from a component point of view, that if you share a component, of course you have a shared cost, you have a shared life cycle, you have a shared responsibility and so on, and there are many good aspects of that. But frankly, you also have a shared risk. So if this component had a flaw, uh, for whatever reason, that flaw will actually m multiply into the business. And given situations where you actually share components, for instance, between a monitoring system and a monitored system, you can actually come to the point where you're creating a systematic flow into the architecture. I have several customers where their systems are critical for the society, not only their business, but for society in the whole. So what can they do? What's your recommendation, Joachim? You can attack this on, on many things, of course. Uh, I think one part would be uh, accepting the cost of, of uh, having non-failures. Th there will be an IT cost and there will be for sure uh, work needed to be done. So going out in a procurement or an RFP where you're buying the cheapest solution, sorry, that solution is most likely not the safest. So there is a cost for, for safety, there is a cost for security, you need to accept that. That would be the first on a very general level. The second level, which is a much more practical level, would be looking at hardening. So having a systematic approach to exposing the errors and to step by step by step doing uh, hardening would be the only way. Thank you very much, Joachim. Nice to hear about this. Yeah. Thank you very much for viewing this episode of Architecture Corner, where we talked about the fragility of IT systems in society. Welcome back next week.